Now let's pivot to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got arguably the biggest preseason game this weekend, only because Russell Wilson is trying to win or save or hold on to the starting quarterback job with Justin Fields maybe sort of breathing down his neck. Here's where it gets interesting. So yesterday I kind of went in on the Steelers, got a little, maybe a little antsy and uh, fired a couple salvos and my Pittsburgh friends were not happy. These are the kind of friends who you like, you walk in their house and there's a terrible towel prominently displayed. I know the kids like to use the word mid, but this is a mid off at quarterback folks. It is uninspiring. I don't want to say downright pathetic because I think still think Fields has some upside in the right spot. But it is not going well in Pittsburgh. And I want to tell Steelers fans a quick story about this small company you may have heard of, heard of called Intel. Uh, they were designing and manufacturing computer chips for personal computers dating back to the 70s. And they were utterly dominant. Intel ruled the personal computer space 70s, 80s, 90s. And then smartphones came about. And Intel, this smart company, I'm talking like on the Mount Rushmore of Silicon Valley. Intel said, mm, I don't know about those smartphones. Let's stick with the personal computers. And you know how that worked out. I mean, practically every human on planet Earth has a cell phone at this point, except for my kids. That's about it. But they missed the window on pivoting to smartphones. And that was a huge screw up on the part of Intel. They even more recently missed the boat on AI. They're late to the game. I don't know if you saw the news. Intel laying off 15,000 workers. Uh, it's getting bleak over there. And how does this relate to the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, for close to three decades, they have dominated thanks to defense. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, like Intel, missed the pivot to being an offensive league. And for reasons that still remain unexplained, the Pittsburgh Steelers, oldest defense in the NFL last season, most expensive defense in the NFL this season, Mike what are we doing? Now, I know you're not in charge of the roster. That would be the GM whose name I wrote down here, Omar Khan. I would like to give some free advice. You know, Colin and I kind of patented J&C Consulting. Jason and Colin. Jason, obviously, first. My idea. Um, it was a free free advice. Cowherd is, you know, not here, so I'll just fire this off. Um, if you want to turn things around in Pittsburgh, and there is no end in sight the way this team is built. You have no quarterback for the future. Neither quarterback signed beyond this year. Here's a radical idea. Sometimes you need to get radical. I think you got to put TJ Watt on the trading block. And after your heads are done exploding in Pittsburgh, look at TJ Watt just mauling. Is that Burrow? Yeah, he's just, uh, just destroying quarterbacks. I mean, three-time defensive player of the year, 29 years old, going to turn 30 soon. I don't know. He's the most popular stealer. He makes so many incredible plays. Look at that interception dropping into coverage. TJ Watt can do it all. He is tremendous. So why the hell would you trade him, Jay? You're trading our best defensive player? Because it's not a defensive league. I gave you guys the numbers yesterday. Every playoff game that they've been to and gotten smashed in the last six years, they're giving up 30, 40 points. So what's the point of being built around defense? Yeah, trading. Okay, fine. Trade Minka Fitzpatrick. Fine. But TJ Watt's going to get you two ones. Now, listen, I know T.J. Watt is beloved. He's going to be probably, you're putting together a Pittsburgh Steelers all-time defensive unit. T.J. Watt's got to be on there. Historically great player. Game changer. And you trade him for two ones. Even if it's to a team like Atlanta, right? The Falcons seem to be spending all the money on defense. Hey, Matthew Judon, Simmons, come on down. Hey, Atlanta, we're all in. I don't know. Who else is all in? Lions? Jets? Eagles, a lot of coaches out there desperate. A lot of teams appear close. The Lions are close to a Super Bowl. Are they a piece away? Now, listen, T.J. Watt's going to be pricey. You're talking two number ones at the minimum. But guess what? Pittsburgh needs that desperately. They need the ammunition to go up and draft a quarterback. And much like Dallas, Pittsburgh ain't drafting in the top 10 a lot because they like to hold on to the whole, hey, we're never under 500. Well, you know, a lot of that's got you in the middle. You know what that means. Drafting in the 10 to 18 range, 12 to 20, 21, in that range. You're not getting any league quarterback that way. They landed Ben Roethlisberger at 11. But they're going to need to go higher to get a quarterback now as it's an offensive league. And Pittsburgh, you missed the pivot to offense. So I know that's going to sound radical. Steelers fans are going to want nothing to do with it. But listen, far be it from me 
to try to organize your roster and get it, I don't know, up to speed in the modern era? Because, folks, I don't like what I'm seeing in Pittsburgh with this Justin Fields, Russell Wilson quarterback battle. Mike Tomlin praising. Did you hear that after last week? He opened the press conference. I was really happy with our punting. That's a real thing. That happened. That's how unhappy he is with his quarterback situation. And let me just remind you guys, you're in a division with Joe Burrow's offensive-minded Bengals, Lamar Jackson's offensive-minded Ravens, and Kevin Stefanski's been the two-time coach of the year, I think, in the last five years. He's an offensive guy. So, Pittsburgh, you can get with the program and put J.J. Watt on the trade block, or you can continue to be mediocre and hang your hat on. We never finish under 500.